Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk to you about functional programming. And I want to tell you about one of its main concepts, which are pure functions. So, functional programming. So, in functional programming, we heavily rely on functions to do our tasks. We use functions in a different manner than usual. So, usually we use functions to group a set of statements which perform a certain task. But in functional programming, we write functions in a mathematical manner, like a square function. You give 2 as input and you get 8 as output. So, in the same way, do we do it in programming. We use the function to compute a new value you know and you we do not update any global variable uh, inside the function we use it in a mathematical style give an input and get an output so the conditions for so the benefits what are the benefits let's uh, try to understand that why do we need to use that so Imagine if you're writing a complex system with tens of classes and you're testing and debugging your code. So fun pure functions are like input and output. They're not updating any global value. So when you will be testing and debugging, you can see that that function is producing a value. It's not affecting any other thing. So it is not the cause of concern. You know, you can strike it as out that it's not causing any problem you can test it very easily that for an input it is producing an output you can write tests for your functions very easily so you know the chances of errors in your code will decrease so what are the criteria for a function to be a pure function let's try to break it down so there are three main conditions that you need to have First, your pure function must rely only on the input, you know, the parameters, input parameters to produce the output. So we give everything that the function needs, like a square function. It just needs two things, the base and the exponent. So to compute the final value, right? So exponent 2 comma 3, that's our thing uh, just two parameters from the input the output can be calculated right and we are not updating any global variable we you know just make a loop to calculate that value and give that to the user so it's a pure function in that manner it's a mathematical function right so so the, sec so the first rule was it must rely only on the input parameters. Second is that it should not update any global variable. And third that for the same input the output will should also be the same. Like 2 raised to the power is equal to 8. It should not change to 2 raised to the power 3 is equal to 7 or 6 or 9. Right? So the for the input, the output should remain the same, just like a mathematical function. Think of it in terms of mathematics, right? So it make so using pure functions makes it easier to track bugs in your code. You know, separate out logical things as like functions, as transformations, right? So let's make things clear by seeing an example of an impure function and a pure function. Let's see the differences. So let's start by seeing an impure function first. So here I have written a small example. So here I have an example of player position. We are updating player position. So player position is represented as a list and we are updating the player position by taking two arguments change in x change in y. We are directly accessing the global variable player position 0, uh, the index 0, and updating it. Say, like same wise, we are doing it for the y position and change in y. Here is a driver code where, where we are just printing the positions before and after. So we are passing the arguments, so 10, 10. But this is not a pure function, right? Because it's relying on this outside value to 
do the task and you know it's updating the outside value directly uh, yeah, so the first two conditions are not being met you know any condition is not being met so this is not a pure function it's it's updating the global value it's it is dependent upon the global value and it's like not returning any value so it's not satisfying any condition so it's in a it is an impure function but how to do this the same in a pure manner so here we have the same problem so but here we are taking uh, uh, the current player position as a parameter so we are we're taking the player position current and you know defining new variables for calculating the final position so the final position is current plus change in x and the final y is current plus change in y and we are returning it as a new position so here we are only relying on the input so we pass that global value we need that value we are dependent on that but we are passing it as a parameter it's not directly updating that global value we are creating a new new instance of a list and we are returning that so this is the uh, you know functional style of doing the same thing so we from the old object we are creating a new object by doing the necessary transformations by updating the x by updating the y and returning a new object so that's how you do it in pure functions so it's like a mathematical function you have a list you calculate the new fields that need to be in the list and you produce a new list and return it back to the user you might think that you know the space is using a lot of space but in the long run you know it is both space efficient and time efficient if you do it right and it you can reap the benefits of making code you're making your code easier to read and understand and make it easier to debug and test so those are the some of benefits of functional programming using pure functions how you can improve your code you know the key is you like you might need to have certain functions that update some values but the key is to reduce the amount of impure functions keep them as few as possible and rely on pure functions for most of the time to you know calculate new values and update things so that was an introduction to functional programming by introducing you to the concept of pure functions if you like this video hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to watch such future videos. I'll see you next time. Thank you.